know the division's been out for like a few weeks now and most of you have probably already beaten it but i still totally wanted to talk about it because it's been the main game of my obsession recently along with the fallout 4 dlc and ESO also had two expansions or DLCs that I did not know about, so I've been playing those as well. And in Guild Wars 2, it's super adventure box time right now, so I've been obsessed with that as well. But back to The Division. So I had played The Division in both the open and closed beta. I'd really not known anything about The Division going into the beta. Um, I'd seen it at E3 and stuff, but to me it just kind of looked like another Watch Dogs, and we, we all remember how great that game was. But I had so many people telling me, oh my god, you've got to play it. If you're in the beta, you got to try it. And so I really honestly just jumped in to try it just so that I could tell people I did. Um, and I ended up playing, the first time I logged into the beta, um, I ended up playing through the character, the first character I created's completion. Like everything, everything that was available in the beta, other than Dark Zone stuff, I had completed in my first initial sit down with the game. So obviously I loved it. I made a second character in the closed beta, played through that story through completion. Um, I played both uh, the closed and open beta, Dark Zone, like a mad woman, um, which is very rare for me. I don't do PvP stuff, but I actually love the Dark Zone stuff in Division. They recently tweaked that. I'll talk about it a little bit later, which makes the Dark Zone less appealing to me. But um, so yeah, I already went into it when the final game was released obsessed. So when the game uh, finally actually released, of course, I played it like crazy. I've already completed everything. I've 100%ed the, all of the non-Dark Zone campaign content. All the side missions, I 100%ed my base of operations, and I 100% found all the collectibles in the entire game. Yay, it feels so good to do that. And now I'm working on more Dark Zone stuff. For those of you who don't know, The Division is a cover-based shooter uh, I say that very loosely because it's not as cover-based as you would think of as a cover-based shooter. I usually don't like cover-based shooters, but I love this game. Um, <laughs> so what has happened is it's New York and this apocalypse thing happened. Uh, it's it's a, a disease broke out or was, or was put out by terrorists on Black Friday. Smallpox? I want to say, for some reason, all of a sudden my brain is going blank on the actual story. But anyways, you're part of this group that is trying to rebuild the city and bring some kind of order. Because there's a bunch of different groups going on within the world of the Division that all have different views on how the world should be after this huge breakout. And there's bodies everywhere and there's areas that are contaminated still and it's just chaos. And you get weapons and shoot the bad guys. You can play through the whole campaign single player if you want, or there's always opportunities to team up with some other groups or some other players to play a mission or two, or just to play your main story mission, because those can be really hard by yourself. And everybody I've played with uh, that I didn't already like know, that just randoms that I joined, were all really, really cool. So far, everybody in the game, the community is pretty great, and I love it. There are some slight appearance tweaks that you can do to your character in the Division to make them look different. Not as much. The game seems to put a lot of emphasis on appearance where you can change your hat, uh, your jacket, your shirt, your pants, your shoes. You, you can change your scarf, all these things. But we all end up kind of looking the same because even though I have like 28 different scarves, uh, they all look incredibly alike. There only seems to be two different design of scarves. One where it's just like this, you know, infinity scarf around your neck. Another one that's actually got a piece of scarf that hangs down. That's like the only two designs. Other than that, it might be called a different color, but it is the same color. I've got a scarf that's called Camo Scarf, but when I put it on, it's purple. The same purple as my purple scarf, the same purple as my trendy scarf, the same purple as my trendy neck warmer thing name, whatever. They have all these different items for appearance modification, but they're all the damn same. How many different trendy pairs of hiking boots? do I have a million? One of them might have brown laces and the other one might have black laces, but that's really the only difference. I have a million different puffy jackets all named something slightly different. Trendy puffy jacket, trendy puffy coat. What makes them look different? One might have a patch on the shoulder and the other one doesn't. I really wish they'd let us have a little bit more fun with the appearance stuff too. I realize they're trying to go for realism, but I mean it would have been cool if if I had logged on during Easter and I would have been given like an exclusive or super limited bunny ears to wear because I logged in on Easter. Something fun like that. I can have a policeman hat or a fireman hat because that makes sense for New York, but I can't have a cowboy hat? What? They don't really let you have fun customizing the way your character looks, which really 
kind of sucks. I was originally explaining the game, but then I went into something I didn't like about it. Um, what do I like about it? I love the open worldness of the game. Um, how it kind of keeps you confined to districts based on your level, but you can wander outside of your district or outside of your level district all you want. Since I don't move on to the next district until I've completed everything possible I can in that district I'm in, I was always like five levels too high for the next district for me to go in, which is fine. Because the enemy's level five, I believe if you're in a group, the enemy's level five levels below the highest leveled person. Um, I believe that's what it is. It might have changed with the patch. So it always kind of kept me challenged, but not screaming and pulling my hair out until the end of the game and then things just got really hard. Um, <laughs> so there's tons of collectibles to find. There's tons of like things for you just to do. There's a crafting mechanic in the game where you're going to run around the world and find like tools and weapon parts, or you can break down the loot that you get that's not really worth selling because it's not a high price item. Um, you can break that down into components for you to be able to craft when you find blueprints for better weapons or better armor and gear. You can then craft those in the crafting mechanic. Also, there's this thing called base of operations. You've got your medical, your security, and your tech. Each of those comes with a different skill line and a different perk you can use. Uh, like the first ones you get in, in security is this shield that you can put up. But the only thing you can do with the shield when you have the shield up is use your pistol. That's why I didn't like it. Um, but then in tech, you get the first thing you get is the thing that I still use even level 30 I still use my sticky grenade I've upgraded the shit out of my sticky grenade but that's my favorite fucking love that thing um, and then in medical the first thing you unlock is like this pulse beacon that it'll you know you do your pulse beacon it'll pulse out and it'll tag or let you know how many enemies are within that range but then the enemies that it has tagged you do extra like critical damage and critical chance, um, which is really cool. But then each of those wings also have other skills that you'll be unlocking. Like medical will have this little like pack you can put down and it radiates health to all your allies around you. And also you can upgrade that I think to like also refill ammo with, when you're within the radius, um, that kind of thing. But while you are building up your base of operations and while you're doing side missions and all these other just like encounters, um, you're getting points that go towards each of those skill or each of those wings. So like if I complete a virus encounter, I will get points that go towards my medical wing, which allows me to buy upgrades in different rooms for that wing, which unlocks more and bigger perks for you within the base of operations. One of my favorites is, is one of the ones that you unlock in your tech wing, which allows you to take your weapons or your armor and respec one of the special skills that it does. Like, like maybe this one piece of armor comes with like plus 50 sticky grenade damage. I might not need that at that time, so I can go in there and say, hey, what other option can I have other than this sticky grenade damage? And it'll tell you what your other options are. The only thing that sucks is you can't actually just pick one. You have to do a roll and hopefully it will choose one of the ones that you want. I wish for one of the like, congratulations, you've made enough points to upgrade your tech wing and use your points to buy this. Um, it should be a reward that now allows me to actually respec my weapons and my armor the way I want and not have to do a roll for it because that costs credits. Things are very expensive in the game and uh, you're gonna wanna hold on to those credits and spending hard earned credits on a roll to hopefully get the spec upgrade that you want is a little dumb, I think, honestly. Um, there are a few things within the game like that that I feel were overlooked that I know that they've announced some of them that are coming out with the patch that will be coming out with the first DLC, which I think is this month. Um, like being able to trade items with other players. Uh, one of the other things that drives me crazy, which is a very strange oversight on their part, is you can buy new appearance items for your character and skins for your guns. And at this time, there's no way for you to preview what the skin looks like before buying it. So it might be like, a uh, trendy runner jacket, but you can't see what it looks like until you actually purchase it, which is dumb. You should be able to preview it, at least preview just the item, if not preview it on your character. I think that's like basic, if you have any type of appearance stuff in your video games, it should just be a known that you can preview it. It's It makes no sense that you can't, it's just dumb. But then also with like skins for your weapons, I have bought five skins. All five skins sounded nothing like camo. All five of them turned out to be a type of camo. I hate camo. I think it's like the dumbest thing in the world. 
um, unless you are actually shooting deer in the middle of the woods. Why people wear it to Walmart, I have no idea, but, <laughs> and why they make bright ass color camo. What am I gonna blend in with if my camo is bright pink and purple? Makes no sense. But they name it things in the store like leaf blue. I'm like, okay, leaf blue. That doesn't sound like camo, so I guess I'll buy it because I'd rather my weapons be blue than camo. I buy it, it's blue camo. Or sunset orange. Okay, cool. Okay, I'll take it. Nope, it's orange camo. Damn it! I don't want camo shit. I'd love to be able to preview the skins before actually buying my millions of camo skins that I don't want. Back to more things that I do like about the game though. Um, the game works really well when you're playing with other people and how your skills and, and the way they play can actually stack and work super well as a team. I love playing with groups of people in the division. It makes things just go so much better because I don't have any of the health skills put on my character. She is all like just attack, 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 tank, do as much DPS as possible. So when I play, it's great because the two friends I play with the most, Gunblade and Fierce Beast, they both have a lot of health benefit skills, which is, yeah, great for me because I need that because I've I got none. There's also, again, tons of things to do in the game. A lot of the side missions did get a little bit uh, repetitive by the end of the game. I wish they had mixed it up a little bit more that not every district I was unlocking would have like, it's going to have a virus encounter, a rescue hostages, and a JTF encounter. Um, I got so sick and tired of hearing, we're taking small arm fire, small arms fire. Got so sick and tired of hearing that. God, but the gameplay is really good. I love the way the guns handle. One of my big things in a shooter is I need the gun to handle well. Um, even if it's got really shitty stability, I can upgrade that. I can change the stability. But I, when I fire a gun in a game, I need it to feel like it's got some weight. I need a gun to fire in a game like it's got some power. Um, I need to feel, it makes no sense saying feel when I'm using a game controller, but I need to feel the recoil. I need to feel the, you know, the push of the, the gun when I'm shooting. And uh, some games don't do it at all and it sucks and just shooting is no fun. But in The Division, it feels so good to shoot dudes. Oh man, it is so fun to shoot some motherfuckers in The Division. I love it. Which, oh, goes going to being able to mod things on your guns. Um, another small oversight that drives me crazy is when you are comparing weapons, like in a store and your crafting menu, you know, you can look at a gun and be like, I wanna compare that to the gun that I'm using right now. You can do that, but the two that you're comparing, when it's comparing the gun you have equipped, it is comparing the stats, not to your base gun, but to the gun that you have upgraded and you have mods on. I really wish there was a way to compare the base stats of my gun that I've equipped to the gun that I could be creating or could be buying. It's really hard because I have to go in and strip my weapon of all mods before I go into a new store to look at weapons or into my crafting to be able to compare the base, the two base models. Um, because then you get incorrect stats. But you might be comparing two assault rifles, but that doesn't mean that the assault rifle you're looking at in the store can use all of the same mods as the one in your inventory or that it even has all the same mod slots. So yeah, comparing weapons is kind of, uh, is not well thought out either. So as I'm talking about things that are annoying me in the game, uh, keep in mind it's all very small stuff and most of the stuff that I have found very annoying in the game um, is going to be fixed with the newest patch. So the things I don't like really hasn't played any part in how much I love the game because everything that I don't like is very small and it's stuff that has nothing to do with the story or overall moving forward in the game. So I, I love the game, I love playing it. I love just running around and finding random stuff or finding, there's tons of like mini bosses all over the world and you, they're not even on your map. You just run around, you find like their, their named characters, the, the enemies that have a name and uh, just running around, maybe just scavenging, looking for some tools, looking for weapon parts some fabric, whatever, and then all of a sudden there's a name character with like eight other dudes around him and you're like, holy shit, oh my god, I was just hanging out, chilling, you know, walking around and giving some survivors some water and oh my god, now it's a huge gun battle. And uh, that adds a lot of random fun to the game. Now to the dark zone. The dark zone is uh, the multiplayer stuff and uh, it's a whole, it's within the same map as the regular campaign, but it's in an area that, uh, you can't just accidentally run into it. Like they don't blend it that way. Within the dark zone, um, you definitely wanna go in with a group 
and uh, your main mission is kind of running around and there's these NPCs that have some really good loot on them and a lot of name characters and mini bosses and they have like dark zone loot and anything that you pick up in the dark zone is contaminated so you have to call in a uh, helicopter to come so you can put your loot on it and they'll take it away to your stash. The part that makes it PvP is um, there is this mechanic called going rogue and when you shoot another player um, you go rogue, which puts this huge target on your back, a big skull over your head, and any if you're in a party, everybody in your party goes rogue, and you become the one that everybody in the map can see. Nobody, you can't see other players in the map unless they're rogue, um, and so everybody wants to go attack the rogue, because if you kill the rogue, you get mega points, you get their loot and mega dark zone funds. Dark zone funds are very, very needed to get those high power weapons. The mechanics used to be, I think, a little bit more fun. Uh, they recently tweaked it to where you get more benefits for going rogue. So that means you have more random players just trying to attack you, which is a little frustrating. I liked it more when you did get perks and you got better loot and, and more dark zone funds and stuff like that if you went rogue. Um, but it wasn't so big of a payoff. Sometimes you would accidentally go rogue. For me, I was it was my group and another group and we were all around the, the point to call the helicopter and we were all based around and uh, one of the guys in the other group started getting attacked by an NPC. I went to shoot the NPC and it was all this big randomness and I accidentally shot the guy. Sexy Toast. I remember your name, Sexy Toast. And um, since they can hear me because I was within their, their range, I was like, oh my god! Oh my god, I totally didn't mean to shoot that guy. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was trying to save you. And since he wasn't an asshole, you know, now I'm rogue. He didn't turn around. His group didn't attack me and shoot me. They understood because it happens to all of us. And they're like, no, that's cool. That's cool. We know you're cool. It's all right. We're not going to attack you. Um, it was an accident. Now it's not so forgiving because the benefits and the payoffs are a little bit higher. So you do have to be a lot more careful um, within the dark zone, which also adds some fun to it. I don't know, maybe I just liked it because I guess it was a little bit easier before. <laughs> but it's really fun in the dark zone too because I like to call it the uh, jumping jacks of friendship. Jumping jacks of friendship, jumping jacks of friendship. <laughs> Uh, basically, the game allows you to do very few emotes. You can wave, you can surrender, you can call for help, um, and you can do jumping jacks. So when you run up to another player, but they're not on your team, um, and you don't know if maybe they're scoping you out to see if you're with a group because they might go rogue to shoot you so they can take your loot. Um, when you have loot, you've got this big yellow booty bin of goodness on your back. Let's everybody know you've got loot. What you do is you kind of like, oh shit, there's another player here. You do jumping jacks. That's how you know that you guys are friendlies, if you both do jumping jacks of friendship. I know it's ridiculous, but I love it. Um, but anyways, I could go on and on and on and on forever about the Division. It's so much fun. I cannot wait for the new DLC. Um, if you're wondering about like after the story and uh, after hitting level cap, there is still more to do. There are daily missions. A lot of the story missions will become daily missions to give you better loot. Um, and there's also challenge missions where you can go through that are much harder much harder, but have a bigger payoff. And then there's also the mega, mega elite weapons and armor you can get for Phoenix coins, which you also get in post-game activities that are a lot of fun. And then the new DLC that's coming out that's going to be adding a lot more stuff to do um, looks really good. So if you see me on, I play on Xbox One, if you see me on, um, let's, let's do some jumping jacks of friendship together and we'll go shoot some... NPCs, not real players, because I don't want to go rogue, um, <laughs> in the dark zone. I'd love that. Don't go in the dark zone by myself, so I'm always looking for a group to go in there with. Anyways, if you haven't played The Division yet and you're on the fence, get it. It's a lot of fun. It's just, it's great. It's great. I know I talked a lot about some of the things I didn't like, and again, those really have nothing to do with, with my overall experience with the game. It's just oversights um, that I do know that a lot of those will be being fixed, so... It's all good. The overall game, my overall experience, although the only negative thing I could say, it did get a little repetitive, but my overall experience is a very positive one. I love The Division. I will definitely be playing through all of the DLC content we'll be getting, the one coming out this month, and all the ones coming after that. I love it. I totally recommend it. No matter what type of gamer you are, it's good and it's fun. Oh, come on, I totally shot it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the best day ever. 
and it's even better when you play with a group of friends. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I totally love you.